Thank you, Steve Davis, for supporting the channel as well. I hope I'd be on holiday. <laughs> that it be a, a music journey, a music holiday. Hello, Stefan. But I'm happy I'm not on holiday because uh, I was here to get some records today. No, <laughs> well, I was, and then. Uh, that's always good, but um, yesterday my back just abandoned me. <laughs> I got like a, the weirdest case of stiff back, which uh, meant means that if I was on a holiday somewhere else, I would certainly not be enjoying it right now. Hello, Diglerder. Steve. I think I am. I thought I was, but um, yeah, I got a supremely weird pain in the lower back, exactly where I was beaten, or almost. But I don't think it's. I just think it's bad luck. <laughs> Hello, 808. Yeah, starting uh, with the disco tonight, huh? Hello Vinyl Dreamscape, bonjour! Yeah, it's kind of heavenly, isn't it? These pads, so dreamy, so deep. With a sense of uh, really positive science fiction, hopefulness. It's melancholic, but it is also so much about beauty.
kind of, yeah, or very close to that. <laughs> I was in the forest, picking up mushrooms. There was a nice clearing, nice light from the sun, and I lay down. And there came the bite. So this is, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the only album of Louis Heyman. Oh, the only albums of Louis Heyman on vinyl, on the Indigo label. And as you can see, uh, no, you can't see it here. But it was limited to 377 copies for some reason. Louis Heyman, Soul Purpose. A double LP that. Uh, When was this released? 2015, I believe, and uh, still hasn't lost its power. Now, this is a good show of the capillarity between. Uh, Dance music and avant-garde. And the avant-garde. You know, today one of the difficult tasks was have I already played this? <laughs> Anyone? For, for example, have I already played this? Ivan Pavlov? Oxy. Yeah, I think I have. You know, sometimes I get excited. I get the record on Fridays. And in a way, it's like I already played it. There's a new um, Ivan Pavlov son album coming uh, out soon. I pre ordered it, so I should get it soon. So this is, um, yeah, this is an artist that started in the 70s, French artist, Pierre Bastien. If, um, if anyone knows, in, I'm, I'm sure some of you know, there was a um, semi-popular toy um, that still exists, I believe, called the Mecano, which was um, metallic parts you would assemble to create machines, miniatures, Basically, it was like the. Um, it was kind of like the um, Lego Technics of its time. And uh, Pierre Bastien, he created um, a whole career around uh, making music with instruments he built out of Mecano. And he started out on the, on the Italian avant garde experimental label, a bunch of other records. I think it was on the, the Auf der Mill record, I have a bit somewhere. But he's been kind of embraced by everyone in the past like 20 years, I would say, 15, 20 years. And um, one of the reasons for that is the Apex Twin. As uh, in the 2000s, his own label, Reflex, started to release albums by Pierre Bastien. This one is called Pop. And uh, Pierre Bastien. He's got two albums on Reflex, and they're both really, really good. And um, 
seems like no one really cared for this. Um, but it's good that um, a dance label, acid techno label, IDM, put these records out. Shows, yeah, the capillarity. Hello, Johan. Hello, Frank. Christophe. I'm always mixing up... Uh, no, Philippe. Exactly. <laughs> Philippe Guillaume. Hello, Angela. Oh, this track. The first one was good, but this one... Oh. Hello, Marcos. <laughs> exactly. Jean Tingueli? Uh, kind of, but nowhere as beautiful as this. It's Jean Tingueli is very cool and interesting, but very experimental. Salut! I hope so. I need to be both in health and uh, in funds. <laughs> Aren't we all? Oh yeah, you were supposed to be at work. <laughs> Hello Michael. Thank you Tony. Tony for supporting the stream. I never seen you before as, uh, in the in the coffee, so much appreciated. Anyone who wants to support, that's the best way. Go in the description of the video, there's a link, the Kofi link, and you can leave a tip for your DJ. So yeah, Pierre Bastien, yeah. this record you can still find for nothing. Let me see. Ah no, not nothing, but still, like considering the quality of the double LP, yeah, there's good copies of this for like 30 bucks, which I think is fair, honestly. They, they did like 500 copies of that. This one is from 2005 on the defunct Reflex label. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you make me think I should almost play something now. Jean-Claude Eloi. LP of that, but this is the 7-inch single. This is the soundtrack from Un Témoin Dans La Ville, 
A Witness in the City, classic French uh, noir movie. Si je vous ai fait venir ici, c'est parce que j'ai besoin de vous parler. J'ai besoin de vous parler sans être dérangé, vous comprenez On n'a rien à se dire, on ne se connaît pas. Je vous en prie, écoutez-moi. Écoutez-moi ou je vous forcerai à m'écouter. N'approchez pas. N'approchez pas Regarde-moi bien. Ça ne te dit rien, non Si, ça me dit quelque chose. Et comment Vous avez une gueule qu'on n'oublie pas. Vous voulez me buter, hein Mais je vous avertis, on sera deux Lâche. Tu vas lâcher ça Tu vas lâcher ça, oui So this is a um, much louder excerpt from the soundtrack with some dialogue ex uh, extracted. This was um, this was not commercially released. This was like a gift in a magazine. This is Bar Barney Willen, the great French uh, jazz musician, featuring um, Duke Jordan, Kenny Dorham, Kenny Clark. Just killer. Small little record like that, man. Always nice. Thank you. Hello, Rich. Hello, Vinyl Dreamscape. Oh, yeah, you were already here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chantinique, all right, I'll check it out. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Edouard Molinaro did the movie. It's like it is French. Uh, Lino Ventura was probably the, um, the French um, Charles Branson in a way, but much, no, much wider range. Now I have to change the record quickly. <laughs> Mon instruction est terminée. Je vous avise que je viens de signer une ordonnance de non-lieu en votre faveur. Vous êtes libre. Libre. Yeah, exactly. Je me rappelle que le non-lieu vous est définitivement acquis, Monsieur Verdier. Cette comédie me paraît donc parfaitement inutile. Okay. L'information est établie d'une façon formelle que vous voulez rompre avec votre maîtresse. Alors, si vous le voulez bien, n'exagérons pas. Exactly, I don't think so. Which, I mean, it's just a nice little oddity. It's like your own little, like, theater piece.
next. <laughs> All right, next is for Lee and then uh, Rich. <laughs> yeah, we get it underway already, see? And um, Liam can't complain anymore, huh? It's already, <laughs> already settled. A few weeks ago I played um, this record, if I remember correctly, I hope I don't show it <laughs> um, the other way around. The Secret Dub Life of the Flying Lizards, which is another alias. Of this, General Strike. Burst for and David took Danger in Paradise. Someone tell me, I hope it's not the one I played last uh, two weeks ago or two or three weeks ago. Um, I thought I'm not gonna play both. Uh, it's quite similar, still dub, not complete as much like pure dub, uh, UK post punk dub as, um, as the Flying Lizards, but still a little bit more pop. You have also Lol Coxhill on the tenor saxophones, Don Roberts on the voice, Marche Tenhorn on the violin, and Interplanetary Music. Recorded um, April and September 1979. Such a wonderful little record. This was first issued in. Um, I think in 2011 on CD, it had remained unreleased for, for that long and um, it got issued on vinyl, I don't remember when, 2012, oh maybe it was actually originally issued in 1995 on, on CD, yeah, and apparently it just got reissued or repressed. Yeah, it's a killer track, that one. That version is really funny. <laughs> Salut, Bat. And sometimes, you know, a good track is a good track. Uh. Let's play something I got this week. Oh, n actually, no, I'll play something else.
So yeah, what's cool with that record, you, you got a dub, pop dub, and more experimental free form improv. It's quite interesting for people who are interested in uh, in records, not just music, but records. This is an artist I played a couple of times this year. Um, my thought it was na- it was qu- nice to 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 share that artist that probably would be just because of the name of his records uh, he would remain under the radar or like ignored. Because on the, on the paper, these records could be a little bit boring. And I played the, um, my two favorite ones, but there's a third one. Oh, there's actually, no, there, there, he, he's got at least four albums that I think are worth, really worth getting. This one is quite intense. This is... This is Alain Kremski. It's a box set. Musique pour un temple inconnu. Music for in, uh, an unknown temple. Ancient chimes from iron, gongs, and uh, symbols from Tibet. And this is him back then. Uh, so again, he was a trained, classically trained musician who won the like first several first prize at the Paris Conservatory which doesn't really get better and and I guess 68 came and um, he traveled to to the east and had a quite dramatic shift in his priorities artistic priorities he went back to modern composition piano um, but he has like three, four records like that, uh, just insanely good. Um, but this one, let me explain why this one is quite interesting in um, in a few regards for um, for you guys. This is all in French, so I'll have to translate live. The two discs contained in this uh, box set have been recorded in February 1978 in Paris in a direct cutting. Which means this was cut live to the playing. No other dubs, no room for mistakes, or mistakes are part of the art. This is a cheap record, by the way. You can get this for less than 20 bucks. Double LP box set. <laughs> the two bandits, huh? Yeah, Toop. Again, Toop is a really good uh, Passover go between. 
Between what? Between the mainstream and the less so. <laughs> yeah, Staubgold is a good label, absolutely. Oh, so did I play that one or did I play the um, the Flying Lizards? I, I, I f hope I played the Flying Lizards and not the, the one I just played. I try to... Yeah. It's not a big deal if I play twice the same record, but I try to to avoid that. Hello, Joe. Nice to see you. Hello, Eddie Perez. Well, I thought I saw Roger for a second. Hello, Analog 65. <laughs> not before me, huh? <laughs> Hello, music in the house. Yeah, totally. Stefan, you know what? There's quite a few boring ones. So I, I, I have investigated a lot of gong records. And I would say this is in the top tier. Hello, D. Oh, I played General Strike. Okay, sorry. I thought I played the Flying Lizard, which means I can still play the Flying Lizard then. Hello, Christopher. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> See? Putting too much pressure on myself. But talking about uh, with music... Uh, no, with... Uh, who was it? Uh, wants to fight me. Analog 65, huh? Maybe we'll play some library as well. Oh, my back. Diggler Dirk, thank you for supporting the channel. And yeah, there will be some library music, absolutely. Thank you for, for leaving a tip in the tipping jar. And Rolf as well. Rolf, very happy with uh, how the stream starts. <laughs> Man, we're only like, okay, almost for 40 minutes in. Guys can always leave a little thumbs up on the video if you like. Yeah, each time I listen to to these Alain Kremsky records, I listen to one I think, and I think, oh, this is my favorite, this is the best one. And the three of them are quite different from each other. And yeah, they're really just fantastic. But all three Gong records on Ovidis, French label.
Oh, nice, yeah. I should find uh, the one that is, has not gotten, gotten reissued because it's a good one as well. This is becoming expensive, these records. Yeah, th this one is. <laughs> Actually, I don't. Um, you and I'm, I'm on the fan with that album. Do you love it? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, the one I usually say is my favorite, but yeah, it's just silly <laughs> to make hierarchies with these records. They're so good. Record is not that well known, I, I would assume. I might be wrong. On the label mostly known for um, John Skidmer, Skidmore, like UK improv jazz, free jazz. Double check it again. So yeah, this is um, Harry Miller, Children at Play on the Great Ogun label. On this record, the Great Harry Miller plays obviously double bass, flute, percussions, and effects. Multi-tracked, recorded, mixed and edited by Keith Beal in Hastings, 1974. Ogun is a label from London, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, yeah. Richardson Court, London. <laughs> the new music referred to as avant-garde jazz, colloquially, is today the preeminent cosmopolitan art form, reflecting more faithfully than any other the quality of life in the 20th century and the mutual dependence of the human community upon one another. The moder modernity of jazz is in large measure attributable to the symbiotic relationship the music has enjoyed with the development of popular culture and the development of electronic communication. <laughs> 1974. Well then, Harry Miller yeah, Har is actually from South Africa. He was born in uh, Johannesburg and came uh, to London to study music way back in 1961. And he played a lot with Mike Westbrook. Mike was born, of course, yeah. I believe Ogun is uh, Mike Osborne's label. I'm not sure, but it's um, 
John Skidmore and Mike Osborne's label, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great record. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is his first record. Oh, he died uh, in a road accident in the Netherlands in 1983. Wow. Yeah, it's an affordable record. Hello, Ainogard. Good evening to you. Someone requested some library music, huh? Oh yeah, I have a record already lined up, so <laughs> sorry, Stunty. The next record is a record I showed before, previously, but I never played it. I'm pretty sure. I might be <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I tend to be, but uh, I don't think so. This is a great record. The Bar Philips um, Giornale Violone or Bass Bar. Um, mm, well, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I find this qu quite different actually. Um, more. Um, Yeah, yeah, I find it, apart from the fact that it's, of course, very similar in uh, instrumentation and concept, it's going somewhere, it's more playful in a way. I, I love Bar Philips, and don't mind me, don't take me wrong. Yeah, quite a lot of jazz tonight, uh, KS, but uh, the night is early, the night is young. Oh yeah, there's the, the four bass uh, Bar Philips albums as well, yeah. Uh, I, I used to be obsessed with Bar Philips. I, have a, I think I have most of his records. Yeah. 
No, no, I, I assumed uh, so much. Very true. I think I've heard it, uh, Johan, but I'm not sure. Sounds... Uh, your description sounds like my memory of it. <laughs> yeah, he is. Ah, okay. Thank you, Nick. It's just that there's quite a lot of these SOS records with John Skidmer, Michael Osborne, and uh, who's the third one? Yeah. I, f you know what? I think I have it, Johan, somewhere. <laughs> You might be right because this apparently this is the very first Ogun re uh, release. ran as an ambitious two-year music program where 40 community groups from each of Birmingham's 40 wards collaborated with a team of leading composers to participate in the creation of 10 new works about Birmingham, UK's 10 constituencies. We worked in artistic partnership with Access Creative College, Birmingham Canterbury Music Group, Birmingham City University Capsule, Capsule, yeah, flat pack projects, hair and hounds, blah 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 blah. Each of our artistic partners selected the cohort of 10 composers. In year one, Pram. Pram, known for their use of unusual sounds, including the incorporation of theremin, toy instruments, otherworldly samples, and analog electronics, worked in the Edgbaston district and were selected by Midlands Art Center with Capsule. So basically this is a um, double LP featuring some of um, the music from that art project centered around the various boroughs of uh, Birmingham from bands from Birmingham. The hold of side B well, is Justin uh, Broderick. Peaceful, um, area in the city. Justin Broderick of Godflesh, Napalm Death, Techno Animal, and, who uh, I hope we'll hear more from space, and about in September or October. Look at 
Chrome is one of uh, is my favorite and, uh, pop band. Slow Gene. Enjoy the um, greenhouses and greens. Yes, kind of. Hello, Daniel. Nice to see you. Happy Friday, yes. John Sorman, yeah. John Sorman is the, the third of the John Skidmore, John Osborne. Man, are, are they all called John? No, no, uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> hmm. well, Pram, uh, I probably will eventually do a special. I have all their records. Uh, it was a love affair since like 91, 92. And, um,. They came back, they kind of ended and uh, came back with an album Hello, a few years ago. It was not that good. Primary school and and then this oddity came out of nowhere. From the Quite unusual. Outside. Difficult to find record. Uh, so there's one copy on Discogs, but uh, I, can't, I don't know how many they did. Oh, okay, this is limited to 100 copies, that's why it's, it's, uh, it's quite under the radar, even for Pram fans. Put it on standby, how does it, are you ready? No. This file will have been made at uh, the school in Harbour. No. Quite a few people are uh, bored the Harry Miller. Yeah, we're listening to the four tracks by Pram from this LP. Not typical Pram tracks, but you can definitely Recognize them, or yeah, S see that it's <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, I don't know that. How good was it? Dark Island is a really good one. Not, not even in my top five, but they only have one weak record in my opinion, so... Shame on you, Michael. Shame on you. Why 
why is Liam talking about sex now? So this is Pram, the four tracks that compose under the blossom that hangs on the bow. this compilation I hope you can make it out 100 copies only 4 words it's fantastic uh, <laughs> value for the money yeah. That's kind of what Prime is, that's true. Whimsical, hypnagogic. It was only issued as seven inch, uh, no. 3 inch CD R's, these uh, casino clams. Are you, are you the artist casino clams? By the way, <laughs> who knows? Maybe. But yeah, there's a series of free bootleg CDs where you can find these tracks. I will do a um, Parmigiani video soon. about that game. It sounded quite cool. I'm not into video games myself, but yeah. Casino Clans is a quite quite fun band. French library heaven, kind of a grail, with one of the best titles ever and one of the coolest covers. This was influential for Stereo Lab, by the way, um, this artwork. They modeled a few t-shirts and things uh, for that. This is from 1974, and this is Claude Vassori. Ionic Scrabble. This motif was, of course, reused several times. Oh, I thought I had one other there. Well, that will be for another week. <laughs> This record is expensive, but for some reason it's not. Considering how rare it is, I, I, I've only seen it, it once in the wild. 
here it is. And uh, yeah, it could be easily like a $500 record. I, I mean, it will eventually be, but people need to learn about it. highlights of that album. Jet for supporting the channel. Anyone who wants to, to support me and uh, so I can, this can continue <laughs> on that level, uh, you can always leave a um, little tip to your DJ in the coffee jar, the coffee link in the description. Thank you. And you can like the video by uh, may, leaving a thumbs up or a comment. And um, you can leave a comment, a thumbs up, and even a tip, even when this is not live, by the way. I think it was, yeah. Ah, Rich is uh, on to Claude Vassoy. He, he was a great musician. He played on hundreds of records. But he only did... He didn't do that many under his name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a fun record. It, like it's new music by Janko Janko Nilovic. Janko Nilovic is kind of the king of library soundtracks in terms of <laughs> amount he did, but lots of quality. He comes from I don't remember which country, but he established himself in France quite early on in his career. And this is a record he did with a band called yeah, the Soul Surfers. I think they did two or three records together, and they're all nice, really nice. No, uh, the one that's playing now or the one before? The library, I showed it, but I didn't play it. But I didn't play, yeah. And the one here? No, because I got it today. And it's been a grail of mine for quite a long time. I, I don't think it was, Stefan. You might be correct, but I, I think... 
Uh, maybe. But in my memory, it was something else. Ah. <laughs> Great question. Maybe it's a coping mechanism to survive uh, in a very uh, hostile environment, which is uh, society. So this is um, a Romanian record. Adrian Tomescu, Piano Recital. Amazing cover. This great lamin laminated cover. I love this. Adrian Tomescu, I have a bunch of records where he's featured, but this is in terms of his own music. This is by far his best one. This is called Naturalia. Piano and uh, magnetic tape. I'm discovering this with you right now. Playing it for the first time. I've been after that record um, for 12, 13 years when I first heard it um, in a bar of all places where there was only two people, me and the DJ, <laughs> no, and, and a girlfriend of mine. And um, yeah, it was after that record heavily, not heavily, but I wanted it. And um, I only put it in my super priority active want list like two and a half, three years ago and it took that long to to source a good affordable copy This might be one of the highlights of my year, of my digging uh, this year, by the way. And the prime record it is gone. <laughs> the one copy that was available. So deep. Chris, absolutely not. You know what? I've never smoked my whole life, so. But it's totally welcome. One Pink Floyd album uh, I decided to keep. <laughs> you know, some of the um, soundtracks might be in the box set, in the 16 CD box set. But I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet my life on it.
kind of 1974 man this is the um, the theme of the night 1974 played quite a lot of records from that year tonight for some reason <laughs> yeah uh, these movies are amazing by the way anyone who who doesn't want to smoke uh, hash or take LSD but is curious about all that should watch these movies and there you go Christopher happy to to read uh, that very happy it's a fairly rare record so the price it's not a cheap record but now that I have it I can say that like I knew I could, if I was patient enough, I would find a, a good, affordable copy. It was still not cheap. But not crazy expensive either. The Romanian record is way less flexy than the US record. <laughs> Actually, I've always had my eyes on these records, but there's a bunch of, um, of Romanian record that I'm obsessed with. A lot I already have, but a few that I'm still really really heavily after and um, well <laughs> now is a good time to to leave a tip to your DJ for uh, for me to get more of these uh, records to present to you yeah Bobby Bobby reminded me of something obvious. Spectrum, which is um, after the Spaceman 3, one guy became spiritualized and the other one became Spectrum and experimental audio research, Sonic Boom, also use that uh, same uh, visual pattern as the Claude Vassori record. Cheers, Bobby. Yeah. Glad you shared the sentiment, Chris. Yeah, some funky jazz sometimes, huh? Why not? Anyone knows what that is? Bonsoir, Julia. A record I still have in the shrink. No more shrink, Joe. Eddie. Eddie Henderson. Inside out. Funky free jazz. Hmm. 
featuring Benny Maupin, Buster Williams, Billy Hart, Patrick Leeson on Synthesizer. You can hear in the background. Really good. Bill Summers on Congas. Synthesizer on this one is so good. Patrick Gleason, look his name up if you don't know him. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's no point. I was about to say probably one of the best year of the 70s, but what does that even mean? Name of that song. Is Moussaka. Which is a Benny Maupin composition. Quite distinctive Benny Maupin bass line. I'll play a song for Michael pretty soon. There it is. Guys are and the drums are insane on that track. <laughs> love, love by um, what's his name? What? A, yeah, it's a fantastic record. Um, Julian Priester. But you know, it is. So there's something really, really oblique about this. Brass in the background, like almost like a drone. Thank you. 
is for Ed Topo if he's here. single DP no single Diplo rhythm hello Ben oh the um, Adrian Tomescu piano recital from 82 on electrocord Romanian state its own label <laughs> you have to break it sometimes contrast song called News Flash featuring Sandra Melody. I have, <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but I have no idea what you're talking about with it. Oh, breaking news. Jose is making lunch. Thank you, Ben, for supporting the channel. Ben Romley, thank you so much. And Bat, thank you. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, Bat and Ben just supported the channel, this is in the Kofi jar in the description of the video. Thank you guys. Now this is for Michael, I believe. Yeah. One of the best American minimal synth band that were actually, that could work on the dance floor. From 1984. This was reissued by Vinyl on Demand, I believe. I mean, look at them. You gotta, you gotta admire the dedication.
sessiz This used to be a quite cheap record, now it's a quite expensive record, but there's a, a ratio of the 12 inch you can find. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I used to play a lot in the early 2000s uh, when I was DJing in Paris and, and elsewhere. There was no reissues of that back then, but yeah. Experimental Products is a really, really interesting band, worth seeking out. This is their hit, obviously. <laughs> we dare you. Dorian Tomescu uh, already sold a uh, copy. Funny little random electronic noises there. Kind of typical. Yeah, the, the LP is super rare. And it's an uneven record, but it's really cool. I don't have it. I wish I had it, honestly. I, it's not a priority for me because I have three EPs of theirs. And I mean, this, this song is by far their... Maybe not the most interesting, but the... Their most climax C. I actually produced one track that ended up, or co-produced, helped produce. I, I wasn't that much into that, but... Um, Sylvain, my friend Sylvain, he did some stuff for them and did some ghost writing for the, the two guys from uh, from Kitsune, um, Gilda and Masaya. Popular Computer was uh, the, the name of his band, who might help a little bit. It's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit silly in a way. Music of the time, the punks of the time. I, I, I should play the units. The units is even better in my opinion, actually. Yeah, exactly. There is something a little off, but 
at the same time it's still imagine if they could just have overproduced it a little bit and we wouldn't care a second for it No, the preset not as catchy though but yeah oh it reminds me of something hmm Um, what's the name of their song? The units, pressure, high pressure days. Okay, maybe I should play it. Let me try to find it. Next record is a record from a band I had only one LP from, which I have because it was produced by Robert Hampson from Loop and Main, and it's a decent record. Um, but because of a conversation I had recently with Dom seeking a friend, uh, seeking a friend, <laughs> oops, um, I gave both them and the label on which this was released kind of a second chance. Um, most of these records are quite cheap, so uh, yeah, but. This is a duo from Bristol, from the whole scene of uh, Third Eye Foundation, Flying Saucer Attack, Movie Tone, um, Fern, and them, Amp. Not the Amps, the, um, the Kim Deal or um, Kelly Deal uh, band, the side project of the Breeders. Uh, this is one of the reasons I was thinking about the record um, today because uh, there was a discussion with Rosé about the amps the other day with, uh, between Rosé and some other people I, uh, maybe Vinyl Dreamscape actually but this is Amp from the Bliss Out series on Darla Records label from uh, San Francisco I believe this is a double LP of ambient post-rock guitar Oh yeah, totally <laughs> the voice. Salut Russell Oh there, okay Because one of my favorite ones there The flow chart Which I think opens the series is still quite cheap This one is eh, So so cheap But it's also in my opinion, by far their very best release. 
Yeah, Dom was telling me that he was getting all the... Um, he was collecting the whole series. And uh, I was buying them, these, back then, when they were released in uh, the second half of the 90s. Yeah, Darla was an interesting label, and the Bliss Out series, Dar Darla was like an um, indie rock band, uh, label. And the Bliss Out was these bands doing more electronic stuff. And um, yeah, there's uh, 10 or 12 releases on the, on the series, maybe 15, I'm not sure. Some more crap, but um, there's three, four that are really, really, really good. Oh yeah, the compilations, yeah. Yeah, so this is just like really nice bliss ambient based on guitars. The whole scene from Bristol back then. Yeah, they had this really, really psychedelic, dreamy, industrial noisy uh, at the same time aesthetic which I, I think I would say yeah Hood was also from there I think but um, yeah Third Eye Foundation is probably the one who did it best who transcended the whole thing in many ways maybe it aged bad I haven't listened to it in a, in a while My fair with your Latin Go song is um, I have to find it, I don't have it. Oh Fuxa, Fusha, yeah. Okay, so I was, you guys took me into that mind frame, so who's in for maybe the best ever American punk song? Yeah, I, I would go as far as saying that, yeah. and the best American punk song ever doesn't even have guitars, it's just synthesizers. And it's not Devo.
Yeah, this this is just this is great, but if you listen closely to it, this is really noisy. This is mostly just noise, and yet it's this blissful ambient music. This is a good example of what ambient should be and is, like the contrast that it's. If you don't have that, then it's new. It's new age. Yes, Angela. This is M. Hello, that uh, dinner. Crash Course in Science is top three for sure. I agree. Crash Course in, uh, in Science uh, has one song that is just. You know the one. My friend um, Romulo remixed it, and I was offered to remix it. It was, uh, it was not. Not the right time for me, unfortunately. I wish I had done it. Best American punk rock song ever. Yes. Salut Loki. Hello Jason. That riff. Oh my god. Oh, that's a good one. I got this from the, the guy himself, Scott Riser. This is a 12-inch version of it that came out later. 
with some remixes are good, but the original is so good. Nineteen eighty digital simulation. Yeah, the, the remix on this are really good. There's a remix by Rory Phillips that really takes the the, the song. Uh, I mean, it's still exactly the same, but it works in a more techno context as well, without without being um, untrue to to its spirit. It's still a punk song. Yeah, the first Yondek uh, record was called The Unit, but it's from the 70s, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, I'm after that record. <laughs> yeah, the first like three, four um, Yondek records are something uh, I wish I, I, I had. I have one, but... Uh, oh, funny, and uh, there's a remix of uh, Yondek by... Um, by Phoenicia, Romulo, who did uh, the remix of um, Crash, uh, test, uh, Crash Course in Science. Yeah. Mid-late uh, 70s. Corkwood Industries, I think. This is an archival release from last year. Who is this gentleman? Huh? Huge hero of this stream. Transversal Disc, who gave us these great archival jazz uh, releases of, from Don Cherry with Jean Schwartz, Pharaoh Sanders, Luc Ferrari, Solitude Transit. This is Ligne de Fuite. the second act of Solitude Transit 
from uh, 1990. So, time to remind people watching who enjoy this to, to like the video, to leave a comment uh, if you're watching this after, after the fact, or if you have any questions. And if you want, can, and feel like supporting the stream a little more, you can always leave a, a little tip in the coffee jar in the description of the video, the coffee link, thank you. Absolutely, Jonathan Fitoussi, who just released an album uh, with, um, what's her name? The ambient new age goddess, Suzanne Ciani. Hello, Ricardo. Yeah, yeah. This one, it's funny, I bought it when it was released and I... Um, something happened, it took me a while to listen to it and uh, it was not the right moment for me and... I love it. But the other one is more traditional Ferrari with uh, the voices, if I remember correctly. Oh, you did, huh, Frank? Yeah, Jack Dangers is a, is a real treat. Real music scholar as well, uh, as being a cool musician. Hear how liquid the human voice becomes there. Just the sounds of the voice, not even the words. What's great about Ferrari is how his electroacoustic uh, music touches on intimacy. Both of the stories, the human stories behind it, but also the complexity and the nakedness of the sound of voice. He created that uh, type of music called Hörspiel, theater of listening basically theater uh, listening play and um, it took me a while to really get into that and to reali realize how how intense he manages it to be
Yeah, this came out last year, so you can still find it easy and cheap. The next one is less cheap. Next one is also a record from 1974. I promise it was not planned. Oh yeah. There could very well be Michel Portal, I don't know. Cheers, G Mac G. Back to 1974 with the soundtrack of a movie called Once, which I know nothing about. The soundtrack is by a guy called Aminadav Aloni. It's the only record he did of electronic music. The track was um, Luc Ferrari. record you could find like 15 20 years ago that was a uh, probably like a dollar bean record a little less so now drawing and it's one of these lines you create to give the illusion of depth. 
two years rich. Yes, Ballad Core, Swedish band, the bathtub of Archimedes with Afro 17. She came with a small poster. Tight letter from the label. Nineteen seventy nine. There's an LP of this. Features Bank Berger on drums. Hello Richard. <laughs> Cheers. Good observation. Don't, 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 don't,
he made us bad, bad car. The band has quite a few really good prog jazz records on the Swedish label MNW. And this collaboration with the Afro 70 band who, who used to do some stuff with um, Fela, if I remember correctly. Just killer. I also have the LP of this, but yeah, seven inch, the sound sometimes. Oh yeah, their double LP is really, really good. MNW, Music Net at Vaxon. The net, um, what you catch fish with, the net, yeah, yeah, music net, uh, Vaxholm, you know, which is a, a place in Stockholm. And now some really, really, really heavy record. It's a box set album. Seven inch. Richard here, Calvin Wazoo will probably love this. And the concept is just fabulous. This is by one of the most instrumental guys in um, in electronic music of the past like 30 years, really. This is a 5 7 inch box set L album. And you can still find it for a decent price considering this was released in 2006 and it's one of the best ambient records ever. Yeah, yeah, you are correct, but I think they have some members in crossover. Hello, Radio Gnome. This should be a concept that you, you would love. So, if you go to Tibet on a spiritual journey, you know when you go to a Catholic church, you had the candles, you come, you go there and you light one of these candles. It's called a cierge in French. I don't know the word in English. Well, to honor Buddha and the mountains, nature, etc. When you go to Tibet, one of the cheapest ways is to buy a Buddha machine. The Buddha machine is a shitty electronic device. It's a little box the size of a cigarette packet uh, which has like a um, kind of a droning chant looped pre recorded. So Robert Enke, Mono Lake. Robert Henke, great dub techno chain reaction, etc. Mono Lake, um, and one of the key architects of um, Ableton, the, the program, used these Buddha machines and layered them, slowed them down, played them together. And you're supposed to mix these together. Let's do that.
my god, this is always such a treat to do that with these records. Oh, that one, this 10 inch. Yeah, it's somewhere here, yeah. One of my absolutely favorite uh, albums. Number one album of the year, it was released as far as I am concerned, 2019 maybe. So right now, we get the two, the two playing together. Just randomly like that. I didn't even need to to beat match or anything obviously. Dimitri, thank you for supporting the the stream, the show with a, a coffee. A little tip for your DJ of the night in the coffee jar. Thank you Dimitri. Yeah, they used to sell them. Um, I think it was distributed in the U.S. by um, Force Exposure, and in uh, in Europe maybe by A Music. Cheers, Thomas. What do you think of these, huh, Richard? The beauty of it is that you can go on, especially if you have three turntables, then you can just go on forever with these. And I'm, I'm so much in pain right now with my back. I thought I would like probably cut off uh, around two hours and we're almost at 2.30, the usual length uh, again, so. Well, this is actually being given the, the Basinski treatment in a way, but this literally is like the layering of these. The tape looping in a, of it. Yes, Michael, exactly. You don't need them all to be Einstein, though, but uh, I'm sure you're a stickler for detail, so... <laughs> It's a, it's a scam. It's me and uh, uh, Polka who are in cahoots. He sells you and manufactures them for you. And now I'm convincing you of getting more turntables for him. Last week I played a Nozinja record which prompted me to go back to all my records of his.
il y a This is Pauline Remix by No Ninja From 2011 How small we are Shangan Electro Il y a Shangan Disco <laughs> On that record, he sampled Serge Gainsbourg, and the music was uh, created by uh, my old friend Philippe from uh, Motor Bass Cassius. Yeah, that was something. Yeah, it was like it's like it's a little bit edgy, a bit sexual sometimes, but like also. Like conscious. MC Solar was probably one of the biggest selling rappers in France, and his music was not hardcore, quite the opposite. He was kind of the poet and the musician, which is a little bit of a marketing ploy, but. Yeah. Alright, one or two songs after this. Next one is already lined up, and I might have one last one depending on the, the inspiration. Yeah, I, with these Schengen Electro songs, I always want to picture myself on the dance floor and dancing to this and just imagining, imagining the, the movements. Like, like, yeah, and imagine everyone also dancing. Just imagine, because there's so much room for interpretation with this music. Of course, it's super fast, but that's what I like about it, how there's so many drums there to, to sculpt your body on. Imagine that, just your whole body. So much fun. simple music in a way um, but just to imagine that that is music solely made for partying I just love it it's like what like 10 12 years old this now this the whole Shangan I think was 2009 that was such a bre uh, breath of fresh air music Sam Levant récolte le tempo is his big one. 
But it's not, Thomas. Why are people, or jazz lovers, so obsessed with American jazz? To the point that they ignore stuff like that. The electronics you can hear the, there are from the drummer. Nineteen seventy nine. Recorded on my birthday. Thank you. I don't, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but <laughs> thank you nevertheless. Yeah, obviously, but still, like now. Now, Richard. Daniel Humer, François Jeannot, Henri Texier. Drums, sax, and bass. Really not a good cover, huh? <laughs> like pretty, pretty lame cover. But you see the three guys. François Jeannot has some amazing solo albums. So does Henri Texier and Humer. This came out on all our our record. Paris. Ibu. Now, why would you say that, uh, Richard? Why would that be in world music? This is a straight up jazz record. At the same time, I know exactly why you're saying that, I think. But please confirm, this is a super cheap record. There are copies of this for like less than 10 bucks around. It's, um, there's only one pressing of it, if I remember correctly. And uh, well, let's see, are there copies of that in the US? No, all of them are in France, Switzerland, and Japan. One in Germany. Oh, one in the UK, one in the US. Yeah, one copy of this in the US for uh, not, not a lot of money. Yeah, 14 bucks. So the electronics you can hear in the drumming there is an instrument called the Sintoba. And Daniel Humer loved that. He used that on many records. It's kind of similar to what um, Bruce Dittmas was doing. But very different. <laughs> Thank you. 
are the last song of tonight. Now this is a secret weapon of mine when I DJ. I think it was a record store day thing, maybe, from a band called We Have Band. It's like a gospel house indie pop, just lovely. François Jeannot on the sax. And he plays the alto, tenor and soprano indeed, and flute. Alright, thank you guys. This will be my cue to go heal my back, take care of myself a little bit. And um, I hope you had fun discovered a few things that you might want to to get in your own life further and uh, um, maybe uh, I've been saying that for two weeks now I hope I can take a week off I don't know when maybe next week maybe not we'll see until then I'll still be on the hunt for more records so uh, I hope you do too and uh, one last time like the video, like put a, a thumbs up if you feel like it, if you feel like supporting the channel by leaving a little tip in the coffee jar, or a big one, <laughs> by all means, that is always good, and I have to, yeah, give you a list of people who helped tonight, Fred, Herdman, Thomas, Corcoran, Steve Davis, Frank, Tony, Digler Dirk, Rolf, Gidget, Ben Romley, Bat, and Dimitri. Thank you guys. And have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye bye.